Are you ready to make a positive change in your classroom or school? Natalie and Kit are going to explain how you can use inquiry in your context to find solutions to those nagging dilemmas which may be keeping you up at night. Learning is at the core of what we do as educators. It is our end goal for our students and it is a process we are all part of in our schools. But not all knowledge is the same, however. Knowledge for practice relates to theories and formal education you may have received when you were in school to be a teacher. Knowledge in practice is very different in that it represents the knowledge you find in your daily work. It refers to the nuanced learnings you gain as a teacher in the trenches. But knowledge of practice is different altogether. It is from this point where teachers are all learners, where we use what we know as a scholar of practice to promote change. This is where inquiry can come into play. What is inquiry and why do we consider it important to our profession? We describe practitioner inquiry as the umbrella under which most professional learning should occur. Specifically, inquiry is a systematic and intentional study of one's practice. Inquiry allows the teacher to become the researcher in their own classroom to explore and experiment with questions or wonderings about systems, processes, people, or curriculum in their own room. As inquiry blooms, it creates meaningful, relevant dialogue among colleagues. These conversations often become the work of professional learning communities. PLCs are an important component of professional learning. PLC dialogue about inquiry empowers teachers to discuss a shared purpose for improving teaching and learning by engaging in conversations situated in real time about meaningful data, shared feedback, and reflective practice with honest conversations in a safe space. Teacher inquiry comes in many shapes and sizes. You can share your inquiry with another community member and work on the same problem of practice. Or you can work with others through the inquiry process, but focus on different questions. Or inquiry with another colleague can be on the same topic, but focused on very different aspects of a certain topic to gain a variety of perspectives and a larger view of the issue. When we look at inquiry as professional development, we are positioning teachers to be their best selves. Every day, teachers encounter problems they have to solve, dilemmas to cross, and issues that need their attention. When we empower teachers to be the problem solvers in their own classrooms, we give them the opportunity to seek new and exciting solutions. Inquiry gives teachers the autonomy to determine what a problem is, research it, and interact with a community of experts, other educators, to help them solve it. Encouraging teachers to solve problems through a systematic and ongoing process helps everyone to see the value of job-embedded professional development. Problem-solving in everyday practice improves a teacher's craft. Depending on your position in the school, you may have a different role as an inquirer. For example, the administrator's role focuses on developing instructional leaders who can guide and coach teachers through the process of inquiry. For a teacher, in order to grow and learn, the teacher needs to have the capacity and the community of support to identify critical issues and dilemmas which may be impacting student learning in the classroom. The inquiry process continues as the teacher creates a plan of action and assesses and reflects on the results, and then continues to inquire for improvement. A coach. Although not all schools or districts have clearly defined learning coaches, anyone can be a coach in the inquiry process. A coach is somebody who helps to create a culture where teachers can grow by engaging in conversations and questions around problems of practice and their context. Coaches help make teaching a public endeavor where colleagues can work collaboratively to improve their teaching and student results. Inquiry is a cyclical process. Each of the puzzle pieces plays an integral part in the learning and inquiry process. Some pieces require more work than others, but when they all come together, it's a work of art. Inquiry starts with a wondering when teachers ask themselves, how could I make this better, what's going wrong, or is there another way? From there, we start to narrow our focus and ask a specific, measurable question. We search for answers, we look first to the research, which points us towards possible solutions and things to try in our own environments. Acting on research, we decide which data will help us best pinpoint what's working and what's not. Oftentimes, in the analysis of data, we seek others' input to really get to the heart of the message. Data can take multiple forms during inquiry, 
so it's also important to question whether the data is measuring what you'd like it to measure. Upon analyzing, we begin to reflect about the process, implementation, and adjustments to practice. The true power of inquiry is sharing with others. The inquiry process begins with a wondering. Wonderings may be that nagging question which bothers you at 2 a.m. or on your way to work in the morning. A wondering often arises from reflecting critically on your work and relates to real problems or issues may, you may be facing on a daily basis. There are eight possibly overlapping passions which may trig trigger a wondering. To begin your inquiry, take some time and think through each of the following passions and ask yourself if there is a dilemma or a nagging issue might, you might like to work on to improve. The following passions may spark an idea. A child, curriculum, content knowledge, teaching strategies or techniques, belief about practice, the intersection of personal and professional identities, advocating social justice, and context. <clears throat> Be cautious not to hone in on a topic which is too big or may become overwhelming. A narrowing wondering may hinder the process as well, especially if the wondering has a yes or no answer or if the answer is clear from the beginning. Once you have chosen the question you want to focus on, the next step is to gather some information. Like any great research-driven tool, we must rely on data to inform our instruction. In the process of inquiry, data takes on many forms and often multiple iterations before we determine if the tool we're using is measuring what we wanted to measure. Depending on the question we ask, data could look like a journal, a chart, student or teacher interviews, observations, or surveys. When analyzing and processing data, it's often where we seek the expertise of our peers to ask and answer reflective questions. Is the data collected answering the right questions? <clears throat> Is the data reflective of the changes I've made? Is the data consistent? These types of questions help us to hone in on next steps and point us in the right direction. Discussing the data objectively with critical friends helps to make, take the emotion out of the conversation and get to the actual progress we're making. Then we revise our plan of action and move towards final steps. Once you have found a solution or answer to your dilemma and have taken action, it's critical that you share your findings. By sharing, you contribute to educational reform, and it is one way to change education from the inside. There are many ways to share. You could share within your own school, which might lead to more collaborative inquiry. You could submit a write-up to an education journal or share online. You could even present at a conference. Or you could think big and try to hold your own inquiry conference. Remember, through inquiry, anything's possible. We hope our discussion of inquiry has given you some food for thought. The process of inquiry can seem quite daunting when first introduced, but with the help of some colleagues and leaders who believe in their process, it has the potential to change teaching and learning for everyone involved.